So, Freddy, as a custodian of the Make Night Machine, Ooh. what score do you hope Transformers 1 is going to get? 5.5. What? 7.5. Ah, very okay. good. Okay, wow, not a fan. Well, it wasn't for me. Okay. I wasn't the target audience. Yeah. But you didn't mind. I like... I sometimes like a film to just give me something easy to swallow. Fair enough. I actually found that I could have got on board with that, but it wasn't easy enough to swallow for me. Okay. All right. Here's how I'm gonna. Here's how I'm gonna preface this. Five point five, but it's not like a. I'm upset. Yep. By this score, it's very much uh, my enjoyment was five point five, and that is with the understanding that this film wasn't for me. I wasn't the target audience. So here's how I approached it. How old would I have had to be to enjoy this film? I like that. Yeah. Did you come up with an answer? Nine. Yeah, okay. Optimal age. Yeah, probably. So, so for me, and I want to be fair on this because I have reasons why I marked it lower and mm. it's not a bad film. This 5.5 is very much... You know, I'd expect the as a custodian of the mate night machine, I'd actually expect the machine to give maybe a slightly higher score, but so it's children's films, right? And children's films can be, or the best children's films yeah. are timeless. So you can enjoy them at any age. And I was looking at this and realizing that I wasn't enjoying it. And there were reasons why I felt that I would only have enjoyed it at that young an age. Like, I hadn't just recently matured to not enjoying this. I would have grown out of this by the time I was in secondary school, I felt. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Did I, you identify any of the... Yeah, I had a few. So, the humour was... I, I referred to it as very basic. Yeah. So, when I say that, I mean that it's like they wrote jokes, which they knew weren't really funny... They were just kind of people saying things. Yeah. And then they would just deliver them as if they were jokes. And then when you're a kid, you don't really care about the content or the substance of a joke. You just laugh at someone. when You laugh when you're expected to laugh. I, I totally agree. And I will even add to that. I actually find Chris Hemsworth, when he does comedy, it's always a bit like that. Yeah. I mean, in his case, although he had, he was probably one of the main culprits of that style. Like yeah. where it was just supposed to be a bit schmarmy and cool, but he's a bit of a comic book. A bit book. daft. A bit, a bit daft, yeah. where it's like, this isn't really funny, <laughs> but but you're stopping, you, you pause, so I'm supposed to and laugh. And say it in a silly way. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, now, yeah, there yeah. were actual, the, the actual comic relief character, Bumblebee, was insufferable. He was really annoying, yeah. He was tough. and he kids was, would like him. Kids, maybe though. I, I felt like kids up to the age of nine. Yeah, yeah, little kids. Yeah. And then you've got things like there are other annoying side characters in kids' films, which I don't think are my favourite characters in that film. Yeah. But I still like moments. For instance, Olaf in Frozen. Some people love him and obviously he's very marketable. I don't find him particularly funny. He's a bit schmaltzy. Schmaltzy and schmarmy and schmarmy. Oh, laugh the schmarmy <laughs> little bastard. The, schwa <laughs> the schwarmy little ferret. So, I still found some of his lines funny. I, I at least felt like the dialogue they gave him was funny. Olaf. Yeah, and yeah. in the case of Bumblebee, not so much. Yeah, he was irritating and not funny. So humor is one thing, but if you're wanting to enjoy a kids' film. As an adult, usually the humour has to be pretty good. And it can be done. Can be done, for we've, sure. We've got examples. We, Gravity Falls Gravity was what we were talking about. Shrek, um, Shrek, I mean, <laughs> Age old it's almost like it's not made for kids, that, but it's, it's incredible. So there's that. Now, there are also the character arcs and some of the character changes, without going into spoiler, that were very much black or white. So... The actual story itself. So let's go on plot before character. The plot itself was pretty formulaic. Mm -hmm. And past the past a certain age, I think you can tell where it's going. And the character changes. So the development between characters. It's hard doing this in a way that 
is or isn't going to spoil because I know some of this is given away. This is a story about the origins of Megatron and Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. So most people will know that going into this. But the way that one character got from point A to point B felt very sharp. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking like, about. And, and we know that's the direction you're going. However, didn't feel like they it very didn't hard. feel natural at all. It felt very much like a click of a button and it, it, it could have been done a bit better. Again, the story, we really knew where it was going for most of it. And some of the, some of the plot turns were a bit like, okay, of course, here we go. Rather than me finding it interesting that that's the origin of characters that I'm more familiar with. I, I found myself more often going, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Oh, we've, we've added that little wrinkle to it. I think that's probably where we differ a little bit. Okay. I, I, I quite, I totally agree. They were predictable sure. and basic and not essentially that well thought through, but I quite enjoyed some of the mm -hmm. little moments in the plot where there'd be, power ups and you know there yeah. would be progressions yeah, to, yeah. and and uh discovery of new areas and new people from the lore and like i i really enjoyed that even if it did feel a little bit predictable it was mm. quite a nice experience well this i think is my overall you, you've what you're saying there falls into my overall feeling which is that it was almost like a tv show episode like that was the quality of the story and the characters and the humor and the, the humor the dialogue as a whole, the overall package. There wasn't really anything that made it feel like a movie, which maybe I'm fairly, but in my own estimations, I dropped it down a couple of pegs. Part of the reason why I still feel that how would I, how old would I have to have been nine? Mm -hmm. I still would have enjoyed this at some point in my life because there are elements that are very enjoyable. Yeah. Namely, it's it's amazing watching transforming robots fight each other. It's really it's great, and they did a, they animated it very well. It looked really cool. That's the thing that made it feel like a movie was the animation. Yeah. They could never have animated a TV series like that. No, not yeah. to that level. And it was really cool. Yeah. Like it was exciting. And I think another point I wanted to make is if we approach this as say an adult is wondering what to show their kid. Mm -hmm. Should you show this to your child or should, should you take your kid to the cinema this weekend and watch Transformers one? I would say at that age, if they're into action, then for sure. Yeah. It's, it would Definitely. be a lot of fun. Yeah. Be a lot of fun for them, which yeah. I think is fair enough. That's what they were probably going for. Yeah. I think as well, in addition to the, it's fun watching Transformers fight you know, robots flipping around and fighting each other. I like, I found it fun watching just the whole world, if you know what I mean. I liked mm. how they built the society. I liked how they explored unexplored areas together. Sure. And I like to see that with, you know, to go vicariously through the protagonist, go on a bit of an exploration around mm. how the animators and the creators of this movie decided to show us the the history of this franchise so which as you know is is something i have to self check because yeah. i am a sucker for a, for a built world it's world building <laughs> world yeah, building gets me and i found myself in that situation where i was like <laughs> I, I was taking a step back and saying you don't you're not enjoying this as much as you think you're enjoying it it's just well, because does that even like make it. any sense like like literally does it make sense you're not enjoying this as much as you think you are <laughs> yes. so is, is there actually is that a sensical sentence <laughs> no i start <laughs> it was really initially like we got the panning of okay. this new world and i was like i'm gonna i was rubbing my hands together wow. and thinking yeah. I'm like oh. I'm ready it's for a funny bit of you one. mentioned that. Then I had to take a step back, and then some of the other issues arose. Well, if you get later in the film, and that changes, then that's totally fair enough. Mm. But I uh, missed the first ten minutes of this. First ten minutes, it oh, was bad. No. Yeah, I know. I felt like a right idiot. I've not watched a Transformers film, so I don't know anything about the world. <laughs> I knew I knew to not look into the film before going into it, so I didn't know anything about the film. <laughs> so when you said I'm not going to look into this film for the first ten minutes, <laughs> so they're setting the status quo in the first. 10 
10 minutes and I'm in the gym showers because the gas is broken on my house. And uh, I'm spending the whole film going like, what the hell is a cyberphone? And like, what's going on with these auto things? And I, it was... Yeah, you know what is funny because you missed the first 10 minutes is they literally explain so much of the law. In Do the they? First, that he, the first scene, um, this isn't a spoiler, it's literally purely expositional purposes that they do this yes. to bring you up to speed in case you haven't watched yeah, any of the Transformers. Yeah, you set the status quo in the first 10 minutes. Exactly, right? <laughs> so this scene is the um, character who goes on to be Optimus Prime is in a library, like a forbidden library, where yeah. he's looking out the old records to find some some clue as to why the world is the way it is. Okay. And then he like presses record and a hologram comes up and it literally explains the law <laughs> within the first Perfect. I could have done with that. I, I forgot that is a point in its favour because I, I as well have watched a few more of the Transformers films than you, but I'm <laughs> by no means an expert. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I okay. sat there and thought, this is exactly what I need to know what's about to go on here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I tell you when I joined without trying to spoil it it's very it's very early on but if you're really that bothered then don't listen but um i started watching from when the race began are you sure that was only 10 minutes no you missed quite a lot did i i think so i was told it was like 10 to 15 so i was like that sounds a lot like 10 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's within the first 30 minutes. <laughs> Sounds like 10. A, Pick a number. For the, for, the, for the sake of the podcast, that's 10. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, did that um, affect you? I think I'd have enjoyed it more, to be honest with you. I, I Yeah, I, I, ha- I guess I had to be a little forgiving of some things. I had an idea of how the Transformers world worked, and I'd heard of Optimus Prime, and I, I knew, you know... Is the big cheese, mm. you know, or one of at least. I understand. I knew there was a whole universe of law in the Transformers mm. world. And uh, I knew that Optimus Prime was important in it. And then I went into the film and I was like, why does he look so pathetic? And spent like a lot of the film figuring that out. Yeah, okay. So a lot of the heavy lifting intellectually was done I was really yourself. focused throughout the whole movie. You, you approached this kid's film as an adult. I yeah, you decided adult. to make this harder for yourself. <laughs> I like, it's like, kids films are too easy to understand. Puzzle to solve. But you sit there the whole time going, "What the hell is going on? <laughs> where, where is that guy coming you know from?" What? In in the spirit of this, I reckon randomly, I am going to <laughs> do one of these new films and go half an hour in and see if I can make any <laughs> comprehension. Especially of what one with so much law. Like, imagine if it was like. Imagine if you'd have done that with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It was the only one you'd ever watched. You just turned up what it sounds like more than 10 minutes in. Yeah. Well, in this case, the fact that they literally explained everything you need oh. to know in the first scene, and then you just went and decided well, to hop in after Yeah. That. I mean, look, environmental pressures, like the cold, you know, God's yeah, name. Yeah. So, cold gets to us all. Um, we're going to dip out. Because we need to. It's find, time, is it? I think it's probably <laughs> time. Because What's we that? need to fire up the fire up the old Maynight transforming <laughs> machine. <laughs> it's probably gonna move around a little bit. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and what we'll do is we'll come back with the actual correct scoring for this movie. Yeah, we're yet to know. We'll find out. Which I'm quite excited about, so we'll see you in just a moment. Jesus fucking! Oh my god, we're going holy, to... holy smokes, folks! <laughs> what happened there? Got out alive. Is oh, what yeah. is what I happened. I wish there. I hadn't have seen you like that. Yeah, well, you know, we won't talk about it live. <laughs> Not that we're live, but <laughs> but thank God we are alive. We're alive. We barely was... made it. It's a shame the fox didn't make it. Anyway, so we have just got back from the main eye machine. We have mm-hmm. put the film in, the discussion in. We've put everything in. It's taken. It's everything. taken everything from us. And it, but it's given us back something sacred. Mm-hmm. The main I score. So, Transformers Juan. 
You know what? I have been really wanting to make that joke loads, and it's not it's not even a joke. What it's Transformers just, Quang? Just Transformers Mexican Quang. Transformers. I, think, I thought that exact same thing about it. I was like, oh it'd be called Transformers Juan if it was Mexican. It's not even like it's like saying Transformers John. <laughs> it makes no sense. Right. Yeah, but now John I'm, makes just as much sense vocally as well. Transformers isn't it? John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we've got a score anyway. So we put it into the main machine. Ooh. We've given it everything. It's come Ew. out with a grand total score. IMDb gave this 7.8, but the main eye machine gave the correct score mm-hmm. 6.11. Oh, you know what? That is almost the same as one we did the other day. Yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine got 6.11. Okay. Joker 2 got 6.14. That's the hell. Uh, In Time got 6.16. You know what, right? Here's the thing. Just to summarize, it was it was very visually impressive. Mm-hmm. It was aimed at kids and suffered for that. Um, and there were some real problems with the dialogue, a couple of real bad problems with the character. Mm-hmm. But it did have some good elements for it. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what? If you're thinking, should I take my kid to this? And your kid is nine and likes action. Yes, I agree. I was if you were if you not were every nine year old would like it, but n- nine year olds who are a bit like we were. If you're listening, a little and you're slow. Nine. <laughs> if your nine year olds are a little slow, <laughs> take them to watch this. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs>